Now a little over a week away from the start of the school year and how this year will play out is uncertain. With COVID continuing to have a major impact, school districts are having to adjust their plans on a weekly and sometimes daily basis. Fox 9's Karen Scullin spoke to three superintendents about impacts from last year and the changes we'll see this year. No doubt last school year was challenging, and this year is no different, really. There will be academic and mental health challenges, plus simply navigating the ever-changing pandemic recommendations or mandates that come in. With that, we wanted to have a conversation with a few different school superintendents to see what the year ahead might look like. Joining us today are Superintendents Ed Graff with the Minneapolis School District, Beth Geese with St. Francis Area Schools, and Lisa Sales Adams with Eastern Carver County Schools. Thanks to you all for being with us today. I first want to kind of talk academics. Each of you had some or an entire year of online learning. That worked out great for some students. Other students are struggling. With that, some students will likely have a little catching up to do. What do you have in mind to kind of identify those students and then get them the help that they need? Uh, Mr. Graff, we'll start with you. Sure, thanks, Karen. Um, yeah, we learned a lot last year with the pandemic, and I think one of the things that we identified very early on is that, uh, as you mentioned, not all of our students were successful um, operating in distance learning. So we took the advantage of uh, having some summer school programming uh, to really identify those students, targeting those students who had some of the most significant needs, especially our earliest learners. And we were, we were able to offer um, an expanded summer school um, programming that consisted of experiential learning. So getting our kids you know, back into that learning mode, working on some routines and rituals, um, as well as giving explicit instruction around literacy. Uh, actually, last year, at the beginning of the school year, I actually asked my principals to really identify the students that struggled the first go around when we did the first shift. So they had identified who those students were and they tracked them throughout the year and provided targeted support. But this summer, we also, like um, Dr. Graff talked about, we had summer school and we focused on reading, literacy, critical thinking, and project-based learning. We're a lot like the other schools. Uh, we are constantly looking at ways to do interventions for our students and things like that. Uh, we are really fortunate. We went back um, in person in January. Um, so we were able to do a lot of assessments this, this spring. Uh, we are showing that our students are needing a lot of work as well, just like the other superintendent said. All right, let's move on to mental health. Obviously, it's a big topic, a lot of parents discussing it, a lot of experts discussing it. Um, and it's not always easy to identify which students are struggling, whether they're struggling at home, socially, or, you know, in school walls during the day. Um, how will you go about identifying those students and is there some sort of a plan or extra counseling in place to help out those that are uh, kind of trying to get through this? Beth, we'll start with you. We are going to be using our federal funding through ESSER to bring in the extra counselors and mental health um, to assist us in that. Um, none of us are overly trained in that. We have a small amount of training and we want to make sure that we're really bringing in the resources to help our kids. And so our plan is to use some of that federal funding to bring in those resources. Well, we're going to continue to leverage the relationships we have with our parents. I know last year, feedback that I received from parents, they did reach out with concerns about their children at all levels because children kind of navigated the pandemic last year in different ways. Um, we're going to continue our co-located services that we have in the building, but also the strong partnership that we have with, um, with our uh, local excuse me, our local county social services agencies. Mm -hmm. But the other piece, we want to make sure that teachers continue to leverage and build strong relationships with students, allowing students to feel comfortable to reach out and say that they need help. We found during the pandemic that, um, you know, self-care was really essential for our workers, as already mentioned. So um, we have mental health partners from agencies in every one of our schools, and we didn't have that last fall. Um, we also have mental health supports with our teams made up of social workers, counselors, We've added um, additional licensed nurses um, who are there to float around and support, you know, as, as needed. Just the logistics of new recommendations, new mandates or new guidelines coming in. Um, that's a lot to navigate and it seems like it changes maybe daily or weekly. There's something new. How do you go about deciding what's best for your district? It's, it's coming down to staffing. You know, we are running a K-12 online program as well and you need to be able to staff that. 
Um, we are seeing a huge influx of students. Um, our COVID homeschooled students are coming back. Um, I didn't expect them to all come back, so our staffing has fluctuated a lot. I also have close to 200 new enrollees in our district. Consider multiple points of data, collaboration, bringing people to the table, listening. Um, I'm really proud of the work that we've done to really collaborate with our district level leaders, our building leaders, our teachers, hearing the voice of the parents, but also the strong partnerships that we have with I can't leverage enough and talk about enough the partnership we have with our local public health department. We do look at the data. We do uh, have a strong partnership and uh, close relationship with the Minneapolis uh, Health Department and appreciate you know, their expertise and knowledge um, and, and certainly appreciate most recently how we're getting uh, clarity around things, You know, whether it's the recommendations for guidelines or just updates on the data with the variant that's out there. Um, it, these are not easy decisions and, and certainly um, looking at the same kind of focus that uh, Dr. Sales Adams mentioned, which is, you know, our goal is to have our staff and students return um, safely and healthy to in-person learning five days a week. That's sure. what we're wanting to have happen. And um, beyond that, we just have to take a look at all the other variables. I want to thank you all for being with us. I know there's a challenging year ahead. Superintendent Sales Adams, Graf, and Geese, uh, thanks again for being with us. Good luck the school year. And our back to school series continues tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. Hannah Flood sits down with kids to get their take on the school year. You don't want to miss it. What they say, it's priceless and it's so, um, you get so much insight from kids and what they're thinking. That's tomorrow night at 9. And on the 